this is how you make an engineering proposal that will win the project almost every time. You might be self-employed or you might just be an engineer or designer and somebody approaches you on the side to do side work. Either way, you need to get you and your customer on the same track and get money transacted so that you can start working on the prototype. This proposal works so well because it relies on three very simple ideas. That is a scope of work, a product definition, and billing milestones crystal clear, and we're not going to use a lawyer to do this contract. Sorry, lawyers, this is sort of a handshake. Let's rip through it page by page. The cover page here, this has a project number on it, and it has a little summary description tag of what the project is and my logo. My toner's low. It's okay, we're going to send a PDF. Next, I like to have a revision log. This allows you to track what changes were made, as this might bounce back and forth between you and your customer a few times before everybody agrees on what you're actually doing. I like a table of contents, contact information. Okay, you might be working with a huge company, somebody with 20 syllables in their name, and you have no idea who the point person is. Put that in the contract, right there. Next, you wanna have a little background synopsis. Summarize what the heck you're proposing here. People don't have all day to read these things, so keep it short and sweet. Next thing that should be short and sweet is your scope of work. That's right here, scope. These are just bullet points, and these are telling you and your customer what you're actually working on. Are you just doing electronics design, or are you also designing a 3D printed housing? There's a big difference between the two, and the cost of the project will reflect that. Put a note at the bottom of your scope of work, simply saying that if the scope changes, you can expect the cost of the project to change. This is the secret sauce right here. If you can do a fixed price quote like this one, you might win a lot more projects than your competition who are trying to do time and materials or a bucket of hours. Because it makes sense. You and your customer want to know what the stakes are. What's at stake here? What are you building for them? What are they paying for it? They don't want to have a blank check to you, and you don't want to have a blank check to them where you don't even know if they're committed to the project. Fixed price, small scope is my recommendation if you can do it. Next is the product definition, short and sweet bullet points. Product definition. And that just says, what are the features of the thing that you're building? More secret sauce here. Don't beat your customers up over all the details. If you know that they need an OLED display, don't nail them down on like what size display. Just know that they need an OLED display. Know how many hours it would probably take you to get it done. Put it in the proposal. Here's the brass tacks, billing milestones. Okay, there's my table. It's just a category, a task description, a deliverable, how many hours, what your rate is, and then what the subtotal is. Very clear. Sorry, lawyers, here are the terms. I like to just have it very handshaky, okay? Very simple terms. You don't have to pass the bar to understand this stuff. This is just what you and your customer are agreeing on so that you're both happy in the end. If everybody's happy, nobody's suing anybody. Finally, we have a signature page. All that this page does is it just asks of your customer that they either sign this agreement or they send you a PO. That's it. End of proposal. This is how I've won countless proposals through the years. Thank you so much for watching. Adios.